Assalamu alaikum we are going to solve example 1.1 with minimum total potential energy formulation method we have already solved this problem by two methods uh, one was uh, direct method and other was weighted residual method now we are going to apply the third method which is this energy method the first step is same as the previous uh, methods that we will discretize this uh, problem into finite number of elements so we have divided the problem into four elements and five nodes and here we have the equation for the total minimum total uh, potential energy formulation so we have minimized the potential energy we have taken the derivative of potential energy with respect to displacement and put it equal to zero so this is the complete formula the potential energy is the difference of strain energy and the work done by the external forces so uh, it, we put it equal to zero as well in the next step uh, what we will do we will uh, solve these um, put, uh, strain energy and work done one by one for example here we have the strain energy so the formula for strain energy is equal to 1 over 2 e into epsilon square where e is the modulus of elasticity epsilon is the strain we know that strain is equal to change in deformation over original length and deformation for example if we have an element in which we have two nodes i and i plus one so this is one of the element we have taken in which we have two nodes i and i plus one so we uh, so the strain will be equal to delta u which will be equal to u i plus one minus u i over l so we will put this value of strain in this formula of strain energy so here we have uh, put the value of the strain in the formula of strain energy so this is the strain energy uh, then we will calculate the total strain energy or the sum of all the strain energies so if calculating sum of all the strain energy we will integrate it over the entire volume so uh, we have integrated the strain energy over the entire volume by integrating it we will bring all other things out of the integration except the volume so by integrating one here we have one right so integration of one and the derivative of the volume is there so it will give us the volume right so this is equal to one over two e into u i plus one minus u i whole square into volume over the length square so we know that the volume is equal to area into the length we will put the value of volume in the in the above formula and we will get this so we have put the uh, uh, formula of volume we have put average area into length instead of the volume in this formula of strain energy now here we have the formula of strain energy and we will cut the length and this will be the formula now we will uh, open this square here and take the derivative of this strain energy with respect to the deformation at node i so here we have at node i we have deformation u i we have taken the derivative of the total strain energy with respect to deformation at node i so we have opened the formula as well u i square u i plus 1 square plus u i square minus 2 into so that was a square plus b square minus 2 a b so in so taking the derivative of this function these are the constants so we will bring it out of the derivative and taking the derivative of this term will give us we are going to take the derivative of this term with respect to u i so you can see in this first term there is no u i term so the derivative of this first term will be zero so here we have the derivative we have taken out the constants and in this first term there is there was no u i term so its derivative is zero in the second term u i square its derivative is two u i in this third term there is a u i term being multiplied with 2 u i plus 1 so we will take 2 u i plus 1 out of the bracket and take the derivative of u i 
with respect to ui that will be 1 now we know that k1 is equal to e into average area over the length so we will put the value of k1 here so it will be k1 over 2 and we will take two constant two uh, out of it common so 2 will be cut with the 2 and we will be left with this so we are left with this now we will open the bracket this will be k1 ui minus k1 ui plus 1 now giving them the numbers for example the upper node was no, uh, node 1 and the second node was node 2 in element number 1 so it will become k1 u1 minus k1 u2 now we will move to node number 2 or we can say node i plus 1 so in this second node that is node i plus 1 we will take the derivative of the strain energy with respect to the deformation at i plus 1 so with the same formula we will uh, we have opened the bracket so here we have uh, this so here we have the derivative we have taken the derivative of this first term 2 ui plus 1 so we have taken the derivative with respect to ui plus 1 so the derivative of this ui plus 1 square will be 2 ui plus 1 in this second term we have we do not have any ui plus 1 term so this the derivative of the second term will be 0 in this third term 2 ui1 are the constants and the derivative of u i plus 1 is 1. So now uh, we will take 2 as a common and divide it and that will be cut from the denominator. And we know that k1 is equal to this. So we will put the value of k1 here instead of this. So we are going to put the value of k1 here in this formula. So it will become. So this is this derivative of strain energy with respect to ui so it is equal to k1 into ui plus 1 minus ui if we give them the numbers again so for the numbers it is element number 1 with node 1 and node 2 so it will become k1 u2 minus k1 u1 so this in the form of mat we can write these in the form of matrices these two equations in the form of matrices so for element number 1 this will be the matrix and for element number 2 similarly we will solve it for element number 2, element number 3, element number 4 so we will get matrices for all of the elements so the next step is combine the matrices for all the elements so here we have combined all the um, elements uh, matri matrices of all the elements so next step is the work done we know that in this formula of uh, minimum total potential energy we have strain energy along with that we have this work done so now what we are going to do we are going to solve the work done by the external forces so the work done by the uh, force at node i will be f i u i so what we will do we will take the derivative of this with respect to ui so here we have taken the derivative of this work done with respect to ui so the derivative of ui will be 1 so it is fi similarly we will do it for node i plus 1 so we are going to do it for node i plus 1 so here we have for node i plus 1 so this is for node i plus 1 uh, now we will take the derivative of this term again with respect to displacement at i plus 1 so here we have taken the derivative with respect to displacement at i plus 1 so the derivative of this with respect to u i plus 1 will be equal to 1 so here from here we have these this matrix f i and u i plus 1 so now we will again put the put everything in this formula So this is the formula for minimum total potential energy formulation putting the values in this formula so we have we have the matrices minus the force matrix so we will bring the force matrix to the other side now in the next step is the solution phase we will calculate the values of k1 k2 k3 k4 from this example we know we know that 
even if 10.4 into 10 to power 6 we can calculate the average area we know the length is length of one element if we have four elements the length of one element will be 2.5 inch so by putting the values in this formula we will calculate the value of k1 to put in this matrix similarly we will calculate the value of k2 we will calculate the value of k3 and we will calculate the value of k4 so we will calculate the values of all the elements and we will put it in this matrix so here we have the, here we have the matrix and we are going to put the values in this matrix so here we have k1 which was 975 and all the values we have put now the next step is to apply the boundary conditions uh, the first boundary condition is that the element the member was fixed from node i so the de deformation at node i is zero and the second boundary condition is that the uh, load at node 5 is 1000 pound so we will apply both these boundary conditions so here we have applied the boundary condition uh, you can see that in the first line we have put 1 0 0 0 which is showing that u1 is equal to 0 and we have applied the other boundary condition which is p is equal to 1000 pound so we have applied both the boundary conditions and now the other other values we have these uh, remaining values and in the next step what we will do we will the, we know that the first column is being multiplied with u1 which is 0 so the first column will also become 0 so f uh, first row is 0 first column is 0 so we can cut uh, this first row and first column and once we have cut the first column and the first row we are left with a 4 by 4 matrix so here we have a 4 by 4, 4 matrix we will solve it by using excel or matlab and after solving we will get the solution and this is the same uh, these are the same values which we got from direct method so we can solve the problem so we have solved the problem by th by three methods direct method weighted residual method and now with minimum total potential energy formulation